Valhalla from Regina, Saskatchewan, and I'm a singer-songwriter, playing a little bit of folk, a little bit of blues, a little bit of country, and a lot of rock and roll. My music career has spanned over 20 years now, I guess, which is crazy to say out loud, but um, yeah, I started playing music when I was five years old on the piano, and as soon as I knew even like five notes or a way to do a little bit with my left hand and a little bit with my right hand, I was already writing songs. And then I picked up a guitar when I was 11, and that kind of became my main thing as far as songwriting, having something to write on and accompany myself um, for singing and playing. So once I started doing the songwriting with the guitar, I moved into playing live when I was 15 at an open mic in Regina, and I was so nervous, I was shaking, and just, it was, it was really, really crazy, but I, that feeling was such a rush, and it was something that was, I don't know, it just, I was so full of joy from it, and I, I was hooked after that, I couldn't stop playing, so, um, yeah, it's been over 20 years since then, and I've managed to get to play music all over Canada and the United States, and I did a run to Europe finally, which was pretty cool, um, back in 2017. So I'm hoping I can do something like that again, but it's been my whole life almost, it feels like, at this point, so I don't think I'm going to stop anytime soon. <laughs> I hope not. Right now, having a music career is a lot different than it's ever been before, just based on everything that we've all been through with the pandemic, obviously. Um, that really changed a lot of things for me because I was, I was actually living in Nashville um, and I was, I was back in Saskatchewan. I had just got back uh, to do a couple shows and I was only supposed to be back in Saskatchewan for two weeks. And while I was home, I, I, I got back and I played up in Big River. I played Saskatoon. And then I got back to Regina and played one final show in Regina. And the next day, everything got canceled. All my shows for the next six months got canceled. And the border closed. And the immigration office closed. And my... My work visa, which I was coming back thinking I was about to renew, that didn't happen. So I actually drove to the border with my a copy of my lease for my apartment in Nashville and went to the border and was like, I live there, please let me back in. And he's like, nope, can't come in. Do you have a work visa? And I said, well, no, it just expired. And he said, nope, can't come in. So suddenly I was sort of without work and, and homeless all at once. <laughs> So I just, um, I managed to get a place in Saskatchewan again. Thankfully, in Canada, we had the, uh, the COVID benefit, which for a self-employed person like me, saved me, absolutely saved me. And then I was able to fly back down in July of 2020 to um, get out of my lease down in Nashville. And I got all my things into a storage base down there. Uh, because everything shut down, so there was there wasn't even an option to sort of go back and keep doing what I had been doing. So it was, you know, throw everything into a storage space and leave it down there and fly back and kind of be like, well, I'll return when things are better. But you know, the pandemic is uh, it's not something that just comes and goes overnight either. So um, it's it's definitely been a huge change. I'm not touring. I'm not on the road. I'm I'm kind of. Uh, been a little bit isolated, which has good parts and bad parts when it comes to music. Um, there's time to play, there's time to write, but there's a lot less inspiration. I've, uh, I've sort of been a bit of a hermit, so I'm, I'm not having things going on in my life that I'm necessarily experiencing and writing about as much. Um, but it also that's it's also a little bit of a time to go back and and start going back through your past <laughs> and writing about some of that, which is um, 
it's probably for the best. It's probably a good thing as well. Um, somewhat therapeutic maybe and exercising some of the demons, so to speak. Um, so I've, I've tried to make the most of it. I'm not someone to ever sit still for too long. So I'm still finding ways to keep busy. And, and I'm actually going to school right now too, which, you know, I, I don't see it as anything where I'm like, I've given up on music or anything, but I, I think that, um, I've, I've always thought education is, is a great thing and there's nothing, uh, there's nothing bad about it. I mean, I'm gonna, the things that I'm learning, I'm able to also apply those things to my music career. Uh, I'm, I'm learning a lot about business and that's always good uh, for for the musicians who are like me or doing it DIY still. So that's been a really positive experience and I know that that's, that's something that probably will in the end um, extend my career maybe longer than if I continued down the road I was on, which was not really knowing what I was doing in a business sense. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but it's true. It wasn't written in the stars just hanging around in a small city bar but I sure love the look of you after I've had a few and I ain't trying to bring you pain you look at me and I turn away you keep pulling me back in again Don't you close your eyes at night And dream while she's by your side If your mind's made up, I'll be moving on Just kiss me goodbye Just can't stop thinking about you. Just can't stop thinking about you. Just can't stop thinking about you. So here we are at 6 a.m. The sun's gone down, now it's coming up again. I suppose I'll never understand a man. But don't you close your eyes at night And dream of me by your side If your mind's made up, I'll be moving on Kiss me goodbye Cause it's not enough When I'm feeling this wrong For thinking of you all the time If your mind's made up I'll be moving on Kiss me goodbye It's not enough When I'm feeling this wrong Thinking of you all the time Thinking of you every night I just can't stop thinking about you Just can't 
can't stop thinking about you just can't stop thinking about you I just can't stop thinking about you just can't stop thinking about you just can't stop thinking about you Small City Bar is a song that I think even if you're not from a small city you may have been in that kind of a situation but I think that there's something about being from a small city and being that I'm from Regina, that's a city of 200,000 people. Um, it happens a lot that you come across the same people a lot. That's just the nature of being from a small city. So those kinds of situations, um, it's not like you can just necessarily, you're like, I'm going to go out on the town tonight and like go meet all these new people and like chances are you're gonna go to a bar that you've been to many many times before and you're gonna see a lot of the same people that you always see when you go to that bar and which which is fun and stuff but it, it makes these situations I think where people are constantly coming into contact with um you know past lovers or past relationships and um you know there's this little bit of you might you might even meet someone new and then realize that they've dated one of your best friends or that they've you know they've dated someone you've dated or whatever sort of random situations seem to happen but I guess I guess that informed that song in that it's the kind of thing where you have to you get to a point when something's going on and you might be dating someone and maybe there's an official relationship, maybe there's not, but you get the impression that it's probably not going the way that you're hoping it's going to go and you have to make that uh, cut it off. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think that song is just about that 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 breaking point, that moment, getting to that part where you have to you have to make a decision, even if you're seeing somebody um, all over town, or you're hanging out with mutual friends, or whatever situation is going on. Sometimes you have to get to that point where you just decide it's time to. I think I get a lot of inspiration for writing obviously from my own life uh, experiences, things I'm going through. I, I try not to only write about personal things though, because um, there's a lot that you, especially when out on the road touring, there's a lot that I saw going on in the United States, for example. Um, you go to different regions and you can really see how something like the economy is affecting people differently in different places in the country. And that was really interesting to notice that, you know, there's, there's kind of one thing going on out in California, there's another thing going on in New York, and then you have the Midwest, or you have, you know, the area called the Rust Belt, and, and you know, seeing places like Detroit or Cincinnati where there's abandoned houses everywhere and and these sort of buildings that are these relics of you know times glory days where they would have like a yacht club or something like but it's all abandoned and no one's using it now and there's no but you can sort of picture these how it was you know in in the heyday of manufacturing in America and so I try to always at least make myself uh, empathetic um, towards what, what's going on around me with other people. Um, and even in Europe, too. I mean, my first time being there, um, just picking up on, on the history and the stories. And, you know, the, hum the human condition is something that's very universal, but we're all experiencing it through these different variables and stressors and 
things that are putting tension on us or pulling us this way or that. And um, there's always an element of truth that is universal that's in each individual's story, I find. So um, sometimes I might tell somebody else's story, even if I do it from a first person narration in the song where I'm singing like it's me, but it might not it might not be my story. It might be somebody else's story. So I just try and uh, make myself an antenna to pick it up and then do, do the best I can to, you know, give it justice, give it the proper respect of, of the, the true experience of somebody else. And it, it, it becomes a little bit of a raw thing sometimes doing that because you're opening yourself up to a lot of emotions and a lot of, um, a lot of other people's heavy loads, I guess. Um, so it can be, it can be a little bit of a mental weight to carry, but, uh, that's where the, that's where the good stuff is usually, I find, so.
God Gave You Wings, I just wrote. It's the most recent song that I've written. Um, and it, it took me a while to get there to be able to write it because I actually um, haven't, I haven't written anything in quite some time. Uh, and I wondered if it was to do with this, um, what this song is about, because this song is about my dad. And um, I lost my dad in December 2019, and it was uh, very sudden. I mean, um, I knew he had a, a heart condition, but it was something that, you know, he had never really, he was, he was 68, so it, it hadn't come up at a, until it came up, I guess. So it wasn't anything where he was ill or that I was expecting it, I think was why it was such a shock, but, um, my dad and I were really close and he was a musician. He was a fiddle player and I took a lot of inspiration from him for sure. So it was really hard losing him. And as a songwriter, I mean, it's hard, it's hard not to write about something like as major as losing your father because that's sort of, I, I think for me anyway, my natural way of processing and dealing with things is songwriting. That's how I process things. Um, but when it was something like that, that was such a major kind of shift in my life, major thing to go through and just heartbreaking, um, I couldn't it took me a long time to be able to write about it because it was so raw and it was so real. And it was like, so I just, I don't know, I guess for a while I, I kind of turned it all, I had to turn it all off. Not just like, it's not like I could just avoid that one thing and, and write about other things. It was like, I had to turn everything off. Um, and then it just, um, I'd say it took about a year and a half and I didn't write anything for a year and a half. And then it just came one day and sort of hit me all at once. Um, and that's the way, that's the way stuff goes sometimes, you know, I'm not, I'm not like a, in Nashville, there's a lot of people that, that do songwriting for other people. Um, so they'll like, they'll meet, you know, every single day in a, in a writer's room down on music row. And they're just like, churning out these, like, whatever they can get down and they're pitching them to other artists to do. And, and I'm not really like that. I, I write, you know, like I said, from a more personal place. But um, so for me, it just, there was nothing for like a year and a half and I just wasn't writing. Um, but once it came, um, it was like there. Like I knew that whole kind of, I don't know. It's like I could never sum up my dad in one song, but there's something about that song that that captures sort of a, I don't know, like a feeling, like a feeling I have about him. So, so once I got that finally out, um, it feels like it opened everything up again. And now I now I'm writing other things too, and now I can go back to sort of being being open and letting things come through me again, which is, which is nice. So I guess that's part of the, the healing process. Yeah. As far as what's next, that's, that's the million dollar question, or maybe it's, you know, a $5 question because that's what I'm down to in my bank account. No. Um, I hope it's a million dollar question. Um, I don't really know what exactly is next because it's a little bit touch and go and day to day right now, but Obviously, uh, university is what I'm doing right now to, to pass my time and, 
and keep active and keep learning. And I've looked into a possible uh, doing like an exchange program where I might be able to get back down to the U.S. for school, which would be cool, and then be doing music and school um, back down south. Um, but it's it's hard to say for sure. I have some like dreams of uh, starting a record label, which I had kind of done a few things towards already, but um, would need a lot more care and consideration. And I, yeah, I have some ideas and I'm just gonna put my intent and my focus forward and see what happens. 